space. Then we have the uh, Mars black. The Mars black is the same as lunar black. It is pigment black number 11. It comes in two sizes. It comes in both the four ounce and the 16 ounce. There is the buff titanium and the buff titanium comes in both the four ounce and 16 ounce. Buff titanium is the same as the PW6 pigment white number six um, shade one. This is the titanium white. So that titanium white comes in both the four ounce and the 16 ounce. Titanium white PW6, female white number six. Um, the watercolor ground is archival. Um, I'll tell you some other things about that as we go. So if you have questions, um, I'd love to see your questions as well. And then we have, lastly, we have the, lastly, the last two, we have the transparent. So transparent isn't quite like glass. It, it has a little tiny, uh, a very light milkish color to it. Um, so there's the transparent, you can still read underneath it, we'll, we'll look at that. And then last is the pearlescent. And um, so it's a luminescent. Okay, so we'll look at all these today. Are all colors archival? Yes, all the colors are, are, are archival. That is correct. Now, okay, so why don't we take a look at some of them. So what is a watercolor ground? A watercolor ground allows you to, as a watercolorist, um, to do things in three dimensions, if you will. It also allows you to paint on any surface that you're interested in painting on. Uh, I brought a couple of surfaces that we'll play with today. For example, we could paint on this can. If we wanted to do something with this can, we could paint the, put the ground around this, let it dry for 24 hours, and now it's a paintable surface. It would behave just like watercolor paper would behave. If we wanted to put it onto um, this plastic cup, which we'll do, we could actually do watercolors on this plastic cup. If we wanted to do it on ceramic, I won't do it on this because I love this cup, but if we want to do it on ceramic, we could actually paint the watercolor ground on the ceramic and then we could paint on that. So a watercolor ground behaves just like watercolor paper. And what that means is for watercolor paper to work, for watercolor paper to work, what it needs to do, it needs to have, um, it, it, it can't be fully um, absorbent because you get no, you get no ref refraction or reflection of light. It would just be dull. I'm going to show you that on this piece of paper, which is just a piece of paper. Um, so there's sizing on this. What the sizing does, if we imagine this piece of paper, if we imagine this piece of paper is this thick, then on the top, some of the watercolor would stay on the top and some would go a little bit into the paper. That allows the, the color to hold on and still refract and reflect the most amount of vibrancy. 
if it goes through the paper, <coughs> then you don't have that refraction or reflection. So let me show you that. And this is going to be so I'm going to, I'm going to use some pyro orange. And so this is what happens if you don't have any type of sizing on your paper. So here it is, just a napkin, no sizing on it, just a napkin. And what's going to happen. is it's going to get it's going to get super dull because it's all being absorbed there's nothing that's keeping it from going through the paper and that's what sizing does and that's what the masking fluid that's what the ground does it acts just like it acts just like watercolor paper It's not going to go through and it's going to end up being way more vibrant. This is goes way more vibrant than this, which is going to get very dull as it's absorbed into the paper. So that's why we use, that's why you use sizing when you're doing work with watercolor. And the watercolor ground imparts the same behavior. So it is archival comes in six colors. Now, sometimes I get asked, um, John, I use a piece of paper. And so I grab a piece of paper, say, for example, you grab this piece of paper right here, just a piece of a bag. And you put the ground on it. Is that going to, is that going to work just like watercolor paper? Yes because now you're putting sizing on this paper. The one thing that you have to consider as well is the, the ground does have some water in it. So if you put it on something this light, you can have it slightly warp or, or, or buckle a little bit because this is, the top is going to be protected and act as a, as a sizing for the watercolor. But the bottom, the water might have gone into this thin piece of paper. If it's on, if it's on this, right, wood, even if it's very thin wood, it's not going to buckle, it's not going to do anything because this is very rigid. Um, it, it, the wood, when we put water on this wood, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be different than if we put water on paper, right? So even though there's not this much water in the ground, it's something to consider. You can still use it. It's still usable, but know that could happen if the, if the, if the substrate you're using can absorb water, okay? Still very usable, however. So Magella, good morning. Let's ever read some of the comments on this side. So I'm missing the thing. Um, hello, Scott. Hello, Stella. Letizia Giovanni. Okay. And how about this side? Does it work on does it work on wood and laminate or both? Yes, it would work on wood, laminate, it would work on metal, it's gonna work on glass. It's going to work on plastic. Um, pretty much anything you can think of, you could put ground on. So it'll work on, on just about everything. When it comes to glass, sometimes you might have to get a piece of steel wool and just uh, kind of not really scratch it, but abrade it a little bit so there's something for the ground to hold on to. 
because glass is such a, a, a very, um, there's very little uh, uh, things for the ground to hold on to otherwise. I, I have found that for me, just for me, 100% uh, of the time it's held on. But that's something you want to test yourself. It will work on glass, however. Um, let's see, a foundation of watercolor ground gives virtually any surface a new texture. Yes, it'll work on wood, metal, ceramic, plastic, glass, stone, plaster, and more. Yes, absolutely. So why don't we take a look? Again, Caroline, Caroline will be on tomorrow, and she's going to show you practical uses of using the ground. So if you have um, questions for her, if there's things that you've done with the ground, I'd love to see those. She would love to see those. Um, but it'd be more practical tomorrow. Today, I'm just I'm going over questions you might want to ask me about how it's made, et cetera. So please, by all means, do that. Um, Claudia, Claudia Diaz Hernandez from Mexico also did a video that I'm going to post on, um, on the watercolor ground. So multiple artists are, are showing how it can be used and how they use it within doing their artwork. I'm gonna push this down again. So why don't we look at the black? So that's what the black looks like. Um, it's Mars black. Mars black is the same thing as lunar black. It's PK, it's, it's pigment black, number 11. Okay, that's what this is right here. So I brought a brush. Hopefully I can clean this brush. Let's try it on this piece of wood. So you don't really have to put it on. I'm a fan of not putting it on very hard, very thick to begin with. It should be about five mil. Um, I just like to do a very light coat to begin with. And then I will come back and do another coat over the top of that. You however can do it any way you wish to do it. That's the neat thing about art. It's really anything and how you want to do it. I can use a brush or I can use these little foamy things that you can find quite easily almost anywhere. So I'm gonna try a little foamy thing here. The thing with the foamy, you can also take it up. Now the one thing with a with a, a brush or a foam, you could also, if you want, leave any type of marks inside of it. You can leave these indentations inside of it like that. Um, any way you want to do it, if you want to do that, you can do it with a sponge, and you can come back with a piece of sandpaper and take those out if you don't want them. Um, or you can make it as smooth as you want it to be. It's really, it's really up to you. Okay. So I can wash that out. You have some warm water right beside you. You can clean your brushes off as long as you do it pretty quickly. If you let it dry, it's going to, it's, it is not going to re-wet. So I'm going to get off my brush real quick. So, you can take it off. And if I went to the sink and used some soap and water, I could make it sparkle. Okay, so that was the black. 
So Scott says, hi, John, does using the ground enhance light facets of colors or is it neutral? So the way that light fastness works, light fastness is all about the pigments you're using. So using a watercolor ground isn't going to do anything for light facets of any color that you're using. Um, if I use two colors and they're a light fastness one, then when I put them onto the watercolor ground, these will still be a light fastness of one. Right. If I use a light fastness of two, it'll be a light fastness of two. The ground isn't going to change the light fastness. That's going to be what it's going to be. So it would be it, it has a it has a neutral a neutral contribution to light fastness. It does not affect light fastness. That's all about the pigments that you're using. See, can it be used to cover a painting that didn't work out and then reuse the paper? Yes. So, Magella, that's absolutely correct. Um, I'll try some on this titanium. I'll try some titanium, which is the best way to do it on some of this. Um, somebody that shows that quite well is going to be Claudia. I'll attach her video today so you can watch it if you want. And she does some corrections of her artwork where she wants to change some things around and she uses the titanium white to do that. So I'll go ahead and I'll post that today if you want to watch it. But the answer is yes to that question. Um, I'd like to know how much surface a jar covers and if it is rotten, if it is rotten from material to material, if it is rotten from material. I don't understand that. Let me see. So um, one it could go a long way. It depends on how much you want to put down. If you used five mils, um, one of these, uh, from my personal experience, when I've done it, I can easily do a 22 by 30. I could probably do several of them with this. It depends on how thirsty the material you're putting it on is. For example, this is a two by six. Here, I primed it with primer. It's not gonna take much to cover this because natural wood has some thirstiness to it. It wants to absorb some of the material. Because I covered this with a primer, it's not going to want to absorb, so I'm gonna get a better coverage. If I put it on top of a watercolor paper, which I would suggest that you not do because you're already paying the money for watercolor paper that is sized. Um, however, it would cover quite readily because your watercolor paper isn't thirsty. Okay. So the more thirsty your substrate is, the less you're going to be able to cover, but it will cover a lot. Um, I will, I, what I'll do today is I'll get one of the jars and I'll get several of the 22 by 30 papers. I'll put it in the back room and I'll go ahead and cover them and I'll show you tomorrow. What I do when I want to get lots of coverage, I don't use a brush, I use a roller. I use a small roller. Um, so you, 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 get a lot of, you get a lot of horsepower out of a jar. Giovanni is making uh, something on a black uh, ground here. I try the white on. This is on a, on a, on a cardboard. Excellent. So keep painting on. What kind of primer will gesso work on prime wood? Um, yes, gesso will. So gesso will work as a primer. Um, gesso isn't made for watercolors. So just so we all remember that. If you put watercolor on gesso, it's going to beat up. That's what's different between a watercolor ground and gesso. Um, gesso won't allow the watercolor to go into the substrate. It'll just stay up on the top. And then when you, if you ever washed, you would wash your paint right off. So that's the difference. Um, absorbent ground, which is made mostly for pastels, would let too much water absorb into the substrate. And what you'd get would be something that would be um, dull. Um, if you're using it for pastels, it'd be quite bright because it's made for that. But if you use it for watercolors, it's too absorbent. 
Okay, so now let's look at, let's go ahead and look at the buff titanium. So from a practical standpoint, um, Caroline's gonna show quite a few things tomorrow. And you can also watch Claudia's um, video, which I will post. If she hasn't already posted, I'll post it. So this is gonna be the buff titanium. Now, if I used a, I can use a, a, a sponge and there'd be no brush marks at all. So it all depends on what you wanna have. You're kind of the uh, person in control of what it is, what it is you want. But putting a, a light coat down first and then letting it dry and then putting down a second coat if you want. To me, that's always kind of the way to go. So Gabriel, that's one that you did. Is that watercolor ground? I'm doing right now on this uh, non-prime wood that's uh, not too thirsty. And then uh, here's my uh, Daniel Smith titanium white ground. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, I don't mind the texture. It looks very minimal. So have you used the ground before? This is my first time. I've been first needing time. to make this sign for my studio, and I've had this ground in my backpack of all going plein air painting uh, for about two months now, and it's awesome. time to use it. Why not? Awesome. Well, thank you for showing that. Okay, so we have Mars Black, and this is the Buff Titanium. This is the titanium white. The titanium white is the one that you're mostly going to use if you want to fix um, an issue on white watercolor paper. So I'll show you both. I'll try to show you both of those. And I'm going to use this to also tint. So I'm going to tint this with um, four acrylics to show you that. Remember, if you want to tint this, it's 20% acrylic. Um, so let me show you. So this is going to be the titanium white. So that's what Gabriel just did to his wood. So there's the titanium white. And then I can let that dry. If I wanted to take out these marks, I could always take those marks out. Uh, I could do it with a sponge or wanted to leave marks. It's better to leave with a, a sponge as a really good job. So I can leave, if I wanted to leave texture, for example, if I wanted texture, I could put texture in. So, or I could take texture out. Whatever you want to do. But I could also come and say I wanted to get rid of, I, did, I didn't want this blue in my, in my, in my, my painting. I could take the blue out. So I could take the blue out. And then I could wait 24 hours and I, I still saw some blue and I wanted it absolutely out, I would just put another coat on. So it's kind of like white out for the artist. If there was a, um, you could actually get rid of a change you want to make. And Caroline will show that tomorrow. It's also on um, Claudio's video. So Magilla says, by the way, if I wanted texture surface in acrylic, I use a fluffy roller. Yeah, I find rollers are a really easy way to, 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 to get the most coverage. But if you wanted, a brush works just as fine as well. So I'm gonna come back to the, tub, the, the, 
the titanium when I start mixing some. So we'll play with some mixing as well. This is the gold. The gold is actually kind of fun. I think it's fun. The gold and the pearlescent are both fun. Extremely, I mean, it doesn't look like it on the screen, but here in front of me, this is really, really bright, really super bright. So that's the gold. And then we have the, the pearlescent. The pearlescent is the pearlescent. The gold is an iridescent. And then this, which is a luminescent. This is the pearlescent, which is a luminescent. Can you say that again? Um, both the iridescent gold and the pearlescent are part of the luminescent pigments that we went over a couple, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, in other words, these two have a lot of mica in them, which makes them reflect and actually refract really well. I can't, there we go. So, I mean, you can tell they're luminescent and this is an iridescent by how it's refracting. See the titanium white and the buff and the, on the, on the Mars black, nothing, but through the roof on the iridescent. The same thing would be for the, the pearlescent, if I get the light to hit it, it's around. There we go. So you can see the pearlescent, how it shimmers. When I do that, that's actually just a pearlescent, really just refracting light. And then the last one before we start. Let's see, I'll do the last one. Last one on. And I hope they're good sports about this. We'll do the last one on this, on this mermaid. So the last one is going to be the transparent. So the last one's going to be the transparent. It's going to be this one right here, the transparent. So with the transparent, I'll do it on maybe two things. So you can see So we'll do it some type of Michael's box here. We'll do it on both. So this is the transparent. Okay, so that whole box whole top of that is now covered with transparent watercolor ground. That's what the transparent looks like. 
So you can still see through it. It's not clear as glass, um, but you can see and read everything, everything through it. You can see the, you can see the artwork because right now it is covering the artwork right here. This is just where I didn't take this off with the, there, I have a heavy hand. Um, but you can see and read everything. And now that, that, that now is uh, paintable. When this dries in 24 hours, it's a paintable surface. So you can do whatever you want with it. So Anna says, and Nicole, gold is my favorite, especially for, for black lettering. What colors are most effective on the gold? Uh, you know, that's, a, that's from a practical, that's a good question. Let's ask that to um, Carolyn tomorrow. Titanium white sticks on Mars black watercolor ground. Oh, thank you, Giovanni. Yeah, it's a simple cardboard, double layer. Okay, so let's play with the, let's play a little bit with the titanium white. Let's go ahead and tint it. So I brought a couple of tubes. I brought some pyrrole orange, some quinacridone red, cad red, yellow light, quinacridone coral, and phthalo blue. So we can play with um, uh, tinting. The rule, kind of the rule for tinting, if you want to, you can thin the watercolor ground um, by adding about 10% water if you want to thin it out for any reason. Um, if you want to tint it with a watercolor, there we go, um, you can use 10%. If you use an acrylic, an acrylic, you can use 20%. So 20% if you're using an acrylic, 10% if you're using a watercolor or 10% if you want to let it down a little bit, make it a little bit thinner of water. But each one is an or, they're not ends, right? It isn't 20% uh, of an acrylic and 10% and of a watercolor. It's, it's, it's one or the other, okay? So we'll play a little bit with doing the watercolor and some of the acrylic. Uh, so, Behind me, right here, I'm gonna turn my back to you a couple of times. I have a scale. It, you could probably eyeball it, um, but I'm quickly gonna use the scale because I have it here available to me. And I suggest that you use a, a plastic spoon or a spoon that you no longer want uh, because the spoon is pretty much gonna be um, not so usable when I'm done today. So the titanium, I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna put about 10 grams and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, that's, this is 10 grams of watercolor ground right there, the bottom of that. Because it takes so much time, if it's okay with you, on the 
On the future ones, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Otherwise it's gonna take a long time for me to measure out each one. But that right there is, this is 10 grams of watercolor ground and that is two grams of acrylic. Okay, so two grams is, is 20%, right? I should have told you the color and I will tell you the color in just a moment. And this is, I, I was asked quite a few times, well, can I, is there any other color? And realistically, there's kind of any color you want. You just mix the appropriate color you like, 20% um, if it's an acrylic, 10% if it's a watercolor, I'm gonna show you both. And you can custom do your watercolor ground. Now, if you did this with the, with the transparent, you're going to take that transparency away. Okay, so you don't want to do it with the transparent. And the easiest one to do it with is going to be the titanium white. Because if you do it with the, um, the pearlescent, you can actually uh, affect the mica and you wouldn't get the same uh, beautiful shimmering effect. So easiest with the easiest with the titanium. So there we go. Now in front of me, this is a beautiful lime green. It is light green. And it looks, it looks pretty much like the acrylic. And so if we take that, you might want to wear a glove because boy, it ends up getting all over your hands. Let's just put on our key. see that light but uh, I can easily cover with this what I made right here probably three of these cans pretty easily and that was 10 grams and how much there's 140 about 140 about 140 grams in a container so it, it's it's a lot And so it's just whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do creativity, you know, creatively. But you can cover your cover your can, and then wait for it to dry. And if it's um, what you want in terms of thickness, it's fine. If you want to go over it again, you can do that. So it's kind of all up to you. We're up to that. Do you do that and it dries? Is it waterproof? Just asking that. Um, so, so when it dries, again, it's not it, it's not waterproof because you don't want it to be waterproof. Um, it's 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 going to be uh, kind of semi permeable to watercolor, which is the same thing that your watercolor paper is. So it's going to let it's going to let um, some of the water color into the ground while the while a good portion stays on the outside. So you get an anchor of your water color, you get the most vibrancy, and you can wash without washing it off. So it acts just like watercolor paper. Uh, I get it now. Okay, thank you. Oh, no problem. No problem. I will say if you asked it, probably 25 other people were thinking it. So, so thank you. So I have some left here and it's gonna dry by tomorrow. So let me do it on the paper just so you kind of see it. So 
So both the acrylic and the watercolor ground, the watercolor ground is a modified polymer. The acrylic is a polymer. And that's why you can use a little bit more of it to tint. It's actually, it's, it's a beautiful lime green here in front of me. So let's do another one. Can you mix powder pigment with ground? You know, if you mix powder pigment with ground, um, can you do it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're gonna get a good result if you do it. I don't think you'll get a good result. But what I'll do is I'll bring some uh, pigment in tomorrow and we'll try it. Does it stay in the aluminum plastic surface well for a long time without coming off? So if you leave it, 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 I mean, it's like everything when it comes to art, it depends. If you're leaving it outside, um, because it's a watercolor, uh, that could affect it. Is it gonna come off? No, it's gonna make believe, for example, I can't make believe. Uh, a good way to understand, to think about it is your house, for the most part, all of you, you've used acrylic to paint your house and it can rain and it can snow and it can do lots of things. And it's, it's going to stay, even in those rough environments that we all live in, it's going to stay on there 10, 15, 20 years. If you put it on a can or a jar and it's inside, it pretty much is going to last. It's, it's going to last an extremely long time. Um, the only thing different than this and the only thing different than a ground and, for example, an acrylic is we have modified the polymer to be able to accept water. That's why you can use it as a watercolorist, and that's why it acts as a, as a watercolor substrate. So we looked at one, we looked at one acrylic. How about we look at one more, and then what I'll do is I will show you a couple of watercolors. Although your watercolors, and I love that. Let me show you watercolors. Let's do that. So I brought with me um, phthalo blue. We know that's going to work super well because it's just an, uh, such a strong, strong pigment and strong color. We can try and look at see what quinacridone pink. We'll try that one out. Um, I have quin coral. I think we're just going to do wrong. How's that? I like that. We'll do cab light and we'll do pyro orange. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. Let's, uh, now here I'm only gonna use 10%. I'm gonna use 10, I'm gonna use 10%. Uh, so I'm gonna do 10 grams of watercolor ground and I'm gonna use one gram of the watercolor, okay, 10%. Ah, perfect. Okay, and then okay. So that's what that's what one gram of watercolor looks like right there. So this is ten grams, and that's one gram. So ten percent. Okay. It's probably, if you're thinking about this in terms of a toothbrush, it probably went from, you know, one part of the bristle to the other part of the bristle. It's, it's not a little bit, but it's not a lot. And let's take this green stuff off. Have any of you done this? Have any of you tinted the watercolor ground? So this is the quinacridone coral, quinacridone coral, and we're going to mix it in.
go. That's what Pernectron Coral looks like. Wanted, we can get the quinacridone coral. We come over to our cup. And we can paint our cup. Okay. And I could put a little, I could put a very light coat on like this, put kind of a little heavy one there, but I can put light and then I can come back the next day and put another coat or I could just, I'm always a fan of doing a light coat and then coming back if I need to, to put another coat on. But definitely the 10 grams. So on plastic, this is on a label right here. And the label is paper, so there's water inside the ground. That's actually from my iced, my iced Americana, which was actually very good. There we go. Better look at here. The label is already open. There we go. Okay. And then. We're just choosing, for example, a piece of, if this were a piece of cardboard, and that'll be paintable in 24 hours. Um, some people take and use a, um, a blow dryer. You don't really wanna use a blow dryer. It's best that it, it dry naturally. If you use a blow dryer and there's too much heat, you won't allow the polymer to, to, to bind to itself. You could actually stop the process. And so it's better if you, if you can, it's always better if you can let it naturally dry. Now, 24 hours is pretty quick, but natural is always better. Okay, so let's do, so why don't we do, how about we'll do phthalo? We'll brush out. This is a pretty inexpensive brush. Um, you don't really want to use a very good brush. You could use the foam roll, use a foam brush, a foam roller, uh, any brush that would paint your house, you know, would work. Again, you just want to get the sub, you just want to get it on to a substrate. Uh, the, the beauty will come with when you use your watercolor brush. It does clean up. I use soap and water to clean out quite well. Right. Let's use the phthalo. This should be very dark. Same kind of thing, uh, you know, easily would fit on the end of a, end of a toothbrush, right? So it's only about, about that much right there. So, but we all probably have those little tiny uh, scales for, for cooking and stuff. We want to do it. What would happen if you use too much? You could destabilize the, the polymer. Okay, 
So this is going to be our thalo. We we'll expect it to be It's a very strong pigment. Thalos, pyrroles, perylenes. I mean, they're all going to be very good because they're all extremely strong. If you're using a transparent color to do this, again, it's not going to work that well because it's transparent. But your thalos, pyrroles, perylenes. Any strong pigment is going to do very, very well. So if you have work you want to show Carolyn tomorrow or questions, she'll be um, demonstrating more, more practical. And I would highly suggest you also look at um, Carolyn's website. Also, Claudia did a great video where she fixes artwork. Um, if that's not on the site, when I'm done, I'll let that be loaded. Take this has lines. See the lines. I take the lines out with my brush, or I could, you know, I could put shapes in if I wanted to put shapes in, or I could take the shapes out. Yeah, Arizona would make it dry really quick, wouldn't it? Um, do a chrome, you know, do a chrome, even, even the, well, here, we'll, let's, we'll take a couple seconds and do this real quick. So let's do it. I'll take open the, um, I'll use the pearlescent real quick. I think what you're going to find out, the same thing for the pearlescent, the iridescent, any of the luminescence, it's going to take away that characteristic because the, the, color the tint is going to get is going to overpower the mica but here let's let's try it so let's try it with pearlescent okay so i'm gonna try it with the pearlescent really quick i'll do the pearlescent um now i could i actually probably could play around and see if the pearlescent would still hold up with a transparent um, but i'll try the i'll try the transparent and let's try it with the uh, let's try it with the pyro orange. Okay, so I'm gonna do the transparent, the pearlescent with the pyro orange. So there is our, there is the pyro orange that you can see, you can kind of see it really shimmers. That is the shimmer or the pearlescent. See how it kind of, that rainbow color. So now we'll see if that will remain when we're done. And I'm thinking we're going to get rid of it. I'm not trying to think so. Right. 
Actually, that's not bad. That's interesting. That's kind of interesting. You can still see it. It has, it still has the, the pearlescent. You can still see it. So that's kind of, is that what you used, Gabriel? You have, it was a pearlescent? So that's the pearlescent. Let's put it on here. We'll take a look. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, I can definitely see, I can definitely see the mica. So you can see here on the thalo, kind of, and here. So that mic is still there. I thought I would totally have none of it, but yeah. So you don't see it with the thalo, but here you can really see still so interesting. I didn't think that was gonna, that would work like, oh, hello Agnes. Add color to the substrate after applying ground. Could you could you add color to the substrate after applying ground if you wanted to make some neutral background? But, so Patty, let's ask that of um, of Caroline tomorrow. So Magella, I would agree. It still looks it still looks definitely like there's pearlescent. You can still see see still see the, the it's catching the light. I'm also interested in how granite and colors perform on the ground. Okay, I'll pick out some granite and colors tomorrow. I don't there I would I would suspect that they're not going to granulate. What what are the what are the size of the watercolor ground containers? The two containers, um, Gabriel, are four ounces and sixteen ounces. Four and sixteen. The two sizes. So Peggy asked that too. What would happen if you use one of the granite and colors? Um, so what I'll do is I will do that tonight and I'll let it go for 24 hours. So when we come back, if you come back tomorrow, um, I'll show that real quick. I'll 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 show what happens. You 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 uh, it's because the granulation is differential specific gravity, i.e. Um, it's how it flows with the flows on the paper. And you're not going to have flow with the ground. I'm pretty sure, like 99.9% .9 sure, there will be no granulation, but I'd love to try it. So I'll try it and I'll show that tomorrow. So with that, I wanted to thank you all for being with me today. Um, thank you for those on Zoom and thank you for those on um, Facebook. Thank you both. And if you're back tomorrow to see um, Carolyn, um, this week will be Carolyn and she'll show uh, watercolor ground and others. She's a, you can ask her any questions you want. Um, next week will be Raffaele. Raffaele is um, a, a, a brand ambassador for Daniel Smith, a phenomenal artist. He will be the next week. And then the week after that will be Lauren McCracken. Uh, and please, any questions you want to ask the artist, if you want to show your artwork, etc., by all means do so. And so what I plan to do is tell you ahead of time who the next four artists will be. And um, that way, you know, you can, you can prepare any questions you might have. So with that, Gabriel, thank you for taking part today. Mark, thank you for being there. Jennifer, Agnes, thank you all of you for, for being part today. And I will see you tomorrow or next week. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks, John. Thank you. It was my pleasure.